In 2008, Casey Anthony found herself in the middle of a media storm, charged with the murder of her two-year-old daughter. The trial was a whirlwind of emotion and suspense. Anthony was accused of neglecting her parental responsibility, an allegation that swayed public opinion. The media played a strong role in painting a picture of Anthony, a portrayal that was often questioned for its accuracy. The trial proceedings were dramatic, but in the end, Anthony was found not guilty of murder. She was, however, convicted of providing false information to law enforcement, a twist that left many spectators bewildered. I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. I think he's saying he would like the defendant to testify under oath to verify the information if I understand correctly. That's not what I'm saying. The defendant's not going to testify under oath for you. Well, Mr. Francis, sir, you, if you want to repeat your question, I'm not sure I got it. <laughs> I think that form was executed the following day. Uh, they were filed at the same time simultaneously. They were just filed, uh, they were, uh, it was submitted simultaneously, it was just done the, the, the next day. Haven't we done this? I, I think we covered that, sir. I'm not sure I'm He's asking Any other case? Did what? he get paid on what the show case? No. No. That, that, uh, no. <laughs> what else, sir? She, let me just interject. She didn't uh, delineate what was spent for what, but she testified that 100% of it went toward costs. Investigators, transcripts, travel. Anything else, counsel? The itemization, I don't know. Okay. I may have them submit that separately. They, they, they don't exactly know. Uh, I think uh, maybe a breakdown is necessary. But uh, any other questions that you have, counsel? If you want to submit uh, any further argument, it, we just have some uh, communication problems here. If you want to submit anything to me, just get it uh, to me, fax it to me by the end of business tomorrow, and I'll consider it. Uh, I guess I'm just going to defer ruling. Um, any any other argument by anybody here? Let me let me just uh, you can you can wrap it, wrap up if you'd like. Uh, May I sit down, sir? Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Mason. I, uh, Your Honor, the, there is no challenge to the evidence that this defendant is indigent now. You've already acknowledged she is indigent now. There is no money anywhere. The record is clear about that to pay for any future defense for her. That, those are undisputed facts. And listen, so, I'll, I'll, I'm going to enter an order here of some kind. Uh, I'll rule specifically after anybody else submits whatever they want to submit by tomorrow. Uh, what about uh, you know, rates and caps are associated with this? The Ninth Circuit has a schedule also generally for experts. Uh, we try and get somebody here in Florida before we go out of state. What do you say about that? <laughs> yes. Um, and specifically, you know, you, the, uh, I realize, I think I read somewhere here that, you know, you've developed a relationship with some people, but, uh, for instance, uh, Henry Lee, you know, we have a, we have a cap for, for experts, uh, are you going to deal with that if, uh, if the court grants your motion? It, what, what if he's, uh, gets paid Well, let, let me tell you this. Henry Lee told me one time at a National Association conference that he's done cases, been known to do so for a box of oranges. And Mr. Mason, you sent me a crate of, of oranges. All right, all right. The, you, the point here is there are caps and there are rates. And we've got lots of people volunteering right. their right. time, both lawyers and experts, but there are some expenses we have to have. Okay. In, in order to, to give her a due process. You get the court's point. You can't just yes, uh, have somebody billing us and uh, saying uh, this is what we want. There are rates and caps. And, we, we and, and I would think that when we would submit an application, whether it's to you or you decide to appoint a special master to deal with it, then those fees would be vetted at that time as to whether they were reasonable and necessary and they get paid. Nothing unusual about that. All right. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Anything else from the state? Judge, I just ask that um, Mr. Baez 
provide you with the documentation that he says he can before you render your final order in reference to his documentation and itemization of the experts that have already I think that's uh, fair. The court will review it in camera and consider you know, uh, a request to produce it uh, later on. The amount paid to investigators, amount paid to experts, I don't need you to identify them. Just, you can number them and I would, I would like, what I'd like to do, Judge, if, if, if the court would consider is if the, uh, I could submit, bring all of the paperwork that's involved in this case and Ms. Anthony's trust, uh, present it to the court uh, for an in-camera inspection. I have no objection to the state being present. Uh, any questions that want to be asked? Actually, no, I do actually object to the state. Um, any questions that the court has? I certainly can answer as well. Um, I don't know um, what more would clear things up. I, I think this is really, um, I want to be as clear and forthright with the court. And um, if, if there's any issues, I, I certainly want to clear them up so that the court has a full and complete understanding uh, of where every penny went. First of all, do you want to be heard on that regarding whether you can be present? Well, Certainly, the JAC should have the ability to. to yeah, the problem is getting the JAC here, and uh, um, I'll mull that over. Um, so, you have, sir, can you hear me? I, this is my final contact with you. If this gets scheduled, you do have a right to be here and to review what it is that uh, uh, Mr. Baez plans to show me, and we will coordinate that with you. And I would need. Okay, I would need a body here, though. I can't read it to you telephonically, though. All right? Okay, thank you. don't pay for their travel expenses. All right. Uh, final words? Okay. Uh, yes, sir, not a problem. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hang up on you now, counsel. Thank you for being with us. All right. Uh, the only other thing is... Uh, this didn't involve uh, Jack, so I got a uh, vision of supplemental discovery. You, you. I filed that this morning. Okay. There's a discovery actually, that, excuse me, that I, I had provided to Mr. Baez on Tuesday. Uh, this was relative to the investigation that the court unsealed, right. that I believe has been now released by the clerk or my office. Can we first mention that? Linda, will you come? Thank you. Can I join you? I'm uh -huh. Jeffrey, I'm sorry. No, that's right. Two, uh, two, four, three. We have last names, I Also be clear that we suspect there are privilege matters in there. Absolutely. 
whether it's attorney client or product or otherwise. You're, you're not, uh, you haven't uh, waived any uh, objections. Uh, you haven't reviewed it yet. So I front, any, everything's on the table. Judge, Thank I you. think I, 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 I thought we had 15 days and then you're on the five. I said five days to file a motion. I may give you 115 days after that. I'm in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, w I would ask for I would ask for the 15 judge because quite frankly it's a lot of material to review. In the, in addition to that, we'd Here's like to do some research on the matter. Here's, did you want to be heard on the time frame? Whatever the court does. I will give you 15 days to review it and file a motion. Again, I, again, the, the, again, whatever motion gets filed, you need to make sure we notice Sentinel media uh, so that they can be heard. All right, we're done. Thank you. Okay.